Oh my gosh. Ooh. My mom's story here. Um, that's her. Is she pretty? Mm -hmm. uh, she was just a, a great guy. I'm going to try really hard not to get choked up. It's still pretty fresh, but it's getting better. And I'm just wanting to do this in the, definitely in her memory. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the negative and then we'll wrap up because I know you guys are probably <laughs> wanting to get out of here too uh, to go save lives, right? That's what you're all doing because you're amazing. Um, We'll start with the beginning. So can you do me a favor? Can you just hold that piece of paper up in front of you and flip it over? We're going to pretend here for a second. Just act, uh, I guess it's not blank in the back. Just hold the paper up in front of you. Okay, you're 56 years old. So she gets this job, and she's at day 88. And this is where your little acting piece is going to be. She's at day 88. Some of you might already know what that number is probably leaning towards. And uh, of a 90-day probation. And she gets in there, and I take her to lunch on day 87, and the minister, you know, her boss, and I goes, we love your mom, she's awesome, you know, best thing that ever happened here, she's organized all this, God, we couldn't live without her. The next day, she's sitting at her desk in the morning, and uh, the lady comes up, and I'm going to use you because you're close, okay, <laughs> comes like this and says, hey, Jerry, uh, this came by fax, it, it must have accidentally came here, I didn't read it, okay, now you're going to read it, you're going to pretend to read it. Patient number 12456 is terminally diagnosed with leukemia and blah, 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 and all this other stuff. It's probably gets me choked up. We recommend immediate treatment, life expectancy, blah, 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 all this, all this data. She finds out by facts. 56 years old. The doctor's office accidentally faxed it to her work. Oh, golly. <laughs> yeah, it gets worse. Four hours later, they fire her. Four hours later, they fired So here's this broken, tough mom. Okay, she wasn't telling any of us how sick she was. Okay, I'm the only surviving son. Um, she's just like, not only is she sick, now she knows why she's sick, and she now gets fired from the one job that was hopefully going to give her the health insurance to go get the good health care. Good health care. I hope you all are providing good health care, right? Like caring people. She had a new doctor she loved. Things were sparking up. I watched her health get better. I always was a, I was a jerk of just thinking it was always depression. Come on, mom, let's you know you can get through this. You know I've gotten through everything. You can get through anything. And uh, so my mom, of course, she wouldn't sue. And we were like, ah, somebody should be responsible for this. And I, the person that sent it, I bet you to this day doesn't even know what they did. Yeah. Doesn't even know what they did. Okay. So so my grace was really really limited at that time. So what my mom says, I just want to get healthy. Let's just get me healthy. So uh, the lawyer that I tried to get her to talk to said, just get on Social Security. Just get on disability. Well, here is a 56-year-old woman that raised two children, had never taken food stamps in her life, had never taken a dollar of anything, worked 30 years, and that stubborn woman made it hell for us. Because she's, I'm not doing that. I've never taken food stamps in my life, and I'm not going to start now. So that was the next challenge. Finally, it just got to a point where she had to get assistance, had to get on Medicare, Medicaid, things like that, and, uh, and get help. So we're going to kind of fast forward. She does chemo. And at this point, now I move up here. So now I'm two hours away trying to manage this. Okay? And uh, it's just the craziness of this. And I just didn't really understand how bad cancer was. I'd never been around it. I just didn't understand it. Okay, so I start going, and I go to the doctor's office, and I have the month off at Christmas being a teacher, and I get in there, and she'd walk in her own two feet, and at the end of the day, we take her to the intensive care unit. she spent a night in intensive care. She'd get out the next day. She'd be stable, and this process just repeated. And so I'm, I'm looking at the med list myself now and going, well, why is there a medicine that raises blo blood pressure, and why is there one that lowers it at the same time? And so the doctor wasn't there. They wouldn't even talk to you. Is this, anybody got a God complex in here, by the way? <laughs> yes, you do. You're medical. You know who has a worse God complex than you? This will blow your mind. Teachers. Teachers. It's unbelievable, the God complex in education. Like, I can't even understand how people don't want to look at change or look at actual data or whatnot. So the, the, the God complex doctor wouldn't talk to me, but this PA comes in. And looks at this goes, why? So my mom's on like 20 medication. He goes, why are they having you do this one, this one, same time, and why? Anyway, so he goes and he, he, whatever she was taking, he knocks it down to like 12. Guess what? She quit going to the emergency room. She'd come in, get her chemo, 
And we're grateful for this man. We're grateful for his willingness to look at things. We were grateful for him to be brave enough to have a voice. We forget. I normally have a football that I keep that I throw around. If we think about us all being on the same team and that our goal is to save the patients, oh God, it'd just be so different. So this is funny. Out of Sioux City, I was directed to go to Spencer, Iowa to get wigs. And so I thought I'd play along and make it a fun day. Mom was a lot cuter and I was in, in the wig here and whatnot. So we were trying to, trying to make the best. So I remember that day walking out for the first time. I think I was 36 or something and realized my mom's going to die. Like that day, I finally was like, oh my gosh, she's going to die. So she's lost our hair. She can't drive now. She's <laughs> lost her eyesight. Not lost it, but it's gotten real minimal. And so she's really sick. So she finally gets down uh, to uh, a month to live and they say, go to Mayo. And, you know, of course, everybody's like, oh, can we go to Mayo? Can we go to Mayo? I'm like, no, you got to be sick enough. you got to or, or have a lot of money or the other. And so we finally get to Mayo. I'm going to kind of fast forward some of this. And uh, we get this Doogie Hauser, like, 30-year-old doctor, this young doctor. And, of course, I walk in. I'm like, oh, God. Mayo's amazing, by the way. This Doogie Hauser young doctor gets in there, and he says, I got good news. Quick chemo. And we're sitting there. So the doctor says to me, you don't have cancer. <laughs> she was misdiagnosed. Right? That's what my comment was. Oh, my God. My mom's like, I can't quit the chemo. It's the only thing keeping me alive. She's brained into this now at nine months. That she can't quit chemo. She's watching all the other people dying. She has to do the chemo or she will not stay alive. She's what a fighting woman, right? I mean, just hearing a little bit. She was a fighter. She wasn't going to give. As long as I was alive, she was not giving up. Uh, so Doogie, I'm going to call him Doogie, he was from England or something, says, no, let me explain. This is an unfortunate deal. Here at Mayo, we have another tool. And he turns to me and he's looking at me. And he's got this just intensity, right? So he's looking at me and he says like this. He says, you're a mechanic, right? And I said, yeah, how do you know that? How does he know about me? And he says, I looked you up. He says, so I want to explain this to you so you understand. So we have this tool that has the ability to take and do another test of the dots on the spine that look like cancer. It's actually liver disease. And that's why you've lived so long with this. You've probably had liver disease for 15 years. So he goes on and he's explaining all this. And he starts keep talking like in my language. He's talking like a mechanic. And, and I said, are you a mechanic? He says, oh, no, no. I've just had really good training. So we quit the chemo. Uh, Five months later, she got her hair back. I bought her this little car. I even drove it today. And uh, um, her eyesight had really come back, and she started to live again. And so we got, we got another uh, uh, almost five years together, sit Mayo. Uh, and we had, great, we had a lot of great health care things. We had a lot of great health care situations, a lot. But just once in a while, some of them really sucked. Some of them really sucked. And... Uh, uh, the one, the most recent one was when she got really ill, and I'm sure you all know what this is, right? The uh, insulin pin. And so they, they were training me how to change IVs and if an emergency to give her insulin. So that was at the point they were afraid she couldn't do it. She was just so all over the place. Her blood sugars for years were just crazy, crazy all over the place. And so as a diagnostic technician, I'm like, let's look at the charts. Let's graph it out. And I drove my mom crazy because I want her to write it down to create patterns and to, you know, so I could see how this worked, right? And so the, the nurse comes in to do the training at the hospital. We're in, uh, in the, uh, she's uh, at the hospital. Uh, she was stuck there for months. And uh, they come in and, and I get out a notepad and I start taking notes and the nurse, the trainer looks at me and she goes, what do you do? I saw I'm a mechanic, I teach mechanics. She turns to my mom and she says, oh, you're in perfect hands. Mechanic, they, they are awesome. Mechanics never have any problems. I'm thinking, not in my world. You know, <laughs> oh my gosh, too many parts fall off. It's crazy. So we, we practice on oranges, okay? And we do this and we're, we're doing it and they, you know, and I'm looking, I watched my mom do this for years. And so she, the trainer opens it up, dials it to like two and purges it. Now being a mechanic, I use syringes without the needles all the time. And what do I do? I purge the air out. That makes sense. I turn to my mom and I'm like, do you know that? And she says, no one ever told me. And she's sitting with that big old smiley face. No one ever told me to purge the needle. And I'm looking at the nurse like, I, you been? she goes, well, how long have you been diabetic? She's like, well, about 10 years. 10 years she hadn't been purging the air out. It's not the end of the world. Okay, I get that. I get that. It's a small amount. But the thing was, if the doctor wanted her to dial up 40 units and she's not getting 40 units, the idea of the 40 units is, you guys are pretty amazing. It's calculated to put her blood sugar here, right? So I'm like, 
Mom, another victory. You are going to be so much healthier getting the right insulin. So we're laughing. It's pretty cool. So the next night, this uh, young male nurse comes in, and uh, he's like, you know, hey, I'm here to give your insulin. I said, can I do it? I want to poke my mom. I've been wanting to do this for years. And he says, no, insurance, blah, blah, blah. I need to do it. So he, uh, he says, you know, okay. So we're, my mom, we're talking, and he gets the needle out, sets it. What's he not do? Doesn't perk it. My mom, this is the cool part, here's the teacher in me, her eyes go. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, she got it. She retained it. She learned it. And I say, hey, fella. And uh, mom goes, you be nice. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go outside. And this is where you're going to kind of come into this, okay? I hope, I think, right? So we, uh, we get out there and we're standing in the hallway and I say, hey, listen, I'm a mechanic. And one thing, I know tools. I love tools. And I know that there's tools work differently. And there might be a different pin. I just got training on this. And the pin I got trained on said I needed to purge it. That's how thorough I am. Okay? And by the way, in the manual, it tells you to purge it. It's one of the checklist steps in the manual, which my mom did not find very funny. I, I thought it was funny. But. So I, I say, is there a different type of tools that preloaded or something? He goes, oh, no, no, you don't have to do that. I said, where'd you go to school? He didn't go where I teach, but he said, which doesn't matter. Okay, that's the whole point of all this. And I said, uh, you know what, let's just do this. Can we go get the head floor nurse? I really think you need to purge this, and I, I'd like us to find out. He goes, yeah, no problem. I said, how long have you been a nurse? He says, six months. I said, six months. Well, how many times have you done this? Well, I don't know, geez, hundreds, of thousands. I don't know. I do it every single day, multiple times a day. And I said, okay, well, let's just go find out. So the head nurse comes back in. Now imagine we're all standing. He doesn't warn her, which blew my mind, right? Like say, hey, we got to sit, because he's that confident. And uh, so he, he's sitting there, and I explain the situation. She turns to him. Now, here's imagine this is a, I don't know what I call administration, but it's a leader. She turns to him, she goes, what are you doing? <laughs> of course you got to purge the needle. And I know what she's thinking right away. She's thinking about the, the scale against the wall thing. What the hell else are you doing wrong? Right? You know what I mean? That's what she's thinking. She's thinking, if you didn't purge the insulin needle, what else don't you know? Why is your confidence level? And so she, I'm like, so this yelling goes back for I'm like, stop. Stop. You are just as at fault as he is. And so am I. And she looks at me confused. I go, let's, let's think about this for a second. I go, you've been a nurse for six months. You went to school for a measly two years and you think you're an expert? You think you're a craftsman? You think that you got medical? You're going to learn the rest of your life. I said, listen, did you ever fight with your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your dog die, your cat get sick? Did you ever miss a day of school in six months? Well, yeah, of course. So you think you missed something? Do you think you missed a step? You missed a training? You missed something? I said, the problem with students is they come out, and this is where my fault is, meaning the education system, we tell them, hey, come to our school of two years, you're going to have this degree, and you're going to be qualified. You're, qualified. you're not qualified to do hardly anything. You know what you're qualified to do? to not learn. The only way they're really going to learn is getting in the field, doing the job, getting dirty, getting bloody, whatever way you want to look at it. you got to get out there and do it. And the student looked at me and he's just like a chuck. I turned to the, no, I turned to the nurse you know, and I said, and you're at fault. She says, how am I at fault? I go, you hire these people as young, if fresh, you age doesn't have anything good. Hire people fresh out of school and you think they know it all and you don't check them. Where's the mentorship? Where's the craftsmanship? Let's get back to the brick by brick of America. Do you think they just stuck people out there? And, and, I know, and, and here's the thing that's hard about this. I really had to think about how am I going to deliver this message to medical? Because when it comes to education, you guys honestly have it way better than any other industry. You have clinicals. There's a lot of mentorship. It blows my mind that he made it that far without knowing to purge the needle, honestly. You know what I mean? So your industry is further ahead, I would say, when it comes to education than anybody else. But there's still loopholes. So when you hire someone, when you mentor someone, when you work alongside someone, we want to be able to have an open conversation to question, hey, why do you do that? Or do you know what you're doing or whatnot? And uh, so we all kind of just put our heads down and say, I'm going to go back, Mom. Let's just get through. We'll get through this. She's going to be fine. The kid comes in the next day crying. Blew my mind. He comes in the next day in plain clothes. And he says, oh, I don't know what to do. I didn't sleep all night. And he goes, I, mean, I want to be a doctor. This is, I, I want to go. I said, oh, please do. That knot you have in your gut right now, we need people with uh, the ability to have that knot. That's what we need to question, to care, to concern. I go, 
go on. He's hugging my mom. My mom's hugging him. And I go, you know, she's been doing it 10 years that way. He goes, why didn't you tell me that yesterday? I said, because I wanted you to not sleep. Why? That's the whole idea. You know, and he goes, you're such a teacher. Uh, Her final day, you guys know all these blood readers, right? Who's a nurse in here? You're going to quiz. There's only a few of us. <laughs> you? Okay, so that was her blood sugar. 22. 22. And they gave her insulin. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh. Finally, finally people who understand. Wow. 22, they gave her insulin. I got there, she was alive. We had a fun day planned. I was finally going to take her flea market shopping. So I love flea markets. My mom and I said we really enjoy it. And I get there and she doesn't know who I am. And it's heartbreaking, but I was used to it at this point. And so she starts her blood sugar, comes around, and I'm, so I go to get the nurse. I go, hey, you know, what's going on, Jerry? They take off running. <sighs> Run down the hallway. I'm like, whoa, what's going on? I just want to know if something happened. They're like, they're, Jerry, Jerry, you okay? And she's kind of back to it at this point. I could tell, I could tell you, I bet she was up to uh, 80 or 90th point because I was used to it at that, at that time, right? And it, they said, oh, she was really bad this morning. And they said she was 22. I said, why is she not in the hospital? They've always taken her to the hospital at 50. If she was 400, they'd take her to the hospital, or she was 50. That day, they chose not to. And when I went to the nurse, uh, and she showed me this, I said, and I saw the pen. I don't know why, but it was out. And I said, well, why, why would you give her insulin? She goes, I have to. And I'm like, whoa, what do you mean you have to? This was at a nursing home, assisted living. And I go, and my mom's still alive. And I said, you just put a gun to her head. I brought her here because I can't take care of her. You're going to kill her. Two hours later, she died. I know for that person, she's struggling hard. And her wasn't that she didn't know she couldn't. She felt, you know, that she had no power to not. If she didn't follow the orders, she felt that there was going to be consequences with that. And that's scary. So as you go out there, go save some people. Go be amazing. I hope this speech was inspiring to help you think about things that don't want to be all about negative things. I'm sure that this room is full of people that have done amazing things. If you like what you see here, would you please share it? I'd love you to keep my platform going here on uh, technical education and uh um, the ways to be great in your craftsmanship. So keep on wrenching and we'll see you again in the future. Thanks for being a subscriber and follower of the channel.